Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Sorcerer's Twin Blade, and this is a weapon we don't see pretty much ever. Now, getting started, this weapon requires 20 Strength, 30 Dexterity, 20 Intelligence, and 20 Faith. It has an E-Scaling in Strength and an E-Scaling in Dexterity. It has no physical base damage. It has a magic base damage of 100, a dark base damage of 100, and for me, the attack rating of this weapon is 204. I'm honestly not entirely positive where that 4 came from. I'm assuming it's due to those E scalings. Um, <laughs> the counter strength of the weapon is 120. Poise damage is 15 per hit, and the weight is 10 units. Now, as you guys can see, this weapon is a weapon that can cast spells, similar to the Pilgrim Spontoon, Blue Flame Sword, and the uh, the mace that I'm actually forgetting the name of, the Mace of the Insolent. Similar to those, this weapon is able to cast spells. However, it's not as viable as the Blue Flame Sword or the Mace, in my opinion. There are a few reasons for this, which I'll get into shortly, but for now I'm going to go over the infusion types that you can have for this weapon. First off, a magic infusion. When you do infuse it with magic, you gain a C scaling in magic. Your physical base damage remains zero, your magic base actually drops down to 97, and your dark base drops down to 63. That makes my attack rating with this weapon go to 215. Same goes for the dark infusion. Your magic base drops down to 63, the dark base drops down to 97, and my attack rating actually goes up to 241. So, that is slightly better. But, on the other hand, it's not, because this weapon actually cannot cast hexes. If it could cast hexes, I would say it's without a doubt better to infuse it with dark and then buff with dark weapon. But, due to the fact it can't, that's not the case, and it's actually better to leave it uninfused and buff it with Great Magic Weapon instead. So, there's that. That's silly, and that's just the way it is. The weapon requires 20 faith, and yet cannot cast hexes. You know, it's kind of a little bit silly, but moving on from that. The biggest pro of this weapon, of course, would be the fact that it can cast spells. That's really what makes this weapon very viable. Other than that, you get more counter strength on those spells that are cast. You have a 120 counter strength with this weapon that does apply to spells, similar to the Pil Pilgrim Spontoon and all the others, which is a good thing. And one thing that makes this weapon very good, in my opinion, in comparison to the other spell casting weapons, is the fact that when two handed, this weapon actually does not lose its two handed R2. The two handed R2 is actually simply put over to the L2 slot for the attack, I guess, and you have another attack that you normally wouldn't on a spellcasting weapon. It's something that From Software should have done from the beginning with their spellcasting weapons. It would have solved a few issues and made them more enjoyable, in my opinion. But that's all I've got to say on that. Actually, it's not. I lied. Uh, with that uh, two-handed R2 that was moved to the two-handed L2 spot, you have the first attack of it. You have the first two-handed R2, but you don't have the second follow-up to it. It just simply repeats the spin-around smack again. So, uh, it still leaves a bit to be desired, but it's better than not having anything at all. Now, you also have a unique move set when power stancing this. You have that spin-win sort of attack that the warp sword also has, so it's not exclusive, but it makes it unique in a way. So, that helps out quite a bit. You can hit some decent damage with it. And it makes the weapon actually very fun to use. I actually had a better time using this thing. I had a more enjoyable time using this thing than I did with the Pilgrim Spontoon. So, that's my opinion there. Now the cons. Your damage is kind of garbage. You uh, have fewer melee combos. The power stance does help take care of this, but there's still no second two-handed R2. So, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time.